Let's examine problem 12 for a, a special order decision. You make a product and a customer comes in and says, I'd like a thousand. It's like, normally I sell them one at a time. You want a thousand. They go, yeah, I want a thousand and I want a special price. Uh, and not only that, but I want some special feature in the product. And okay, there's some, some accounting numbers to be crossed. There's really qualitative decisions. Can we serve this client? Is it going to, you know, cannibalize our own sales? There's a million non-quantitative uh, aspects to this decision, but we'll look at the quant elements of like, should you take the order and what should you be thinking about? Eversharp is a knife manufacturer. The company sells, normally sells 5,000 sets of high quality knives each year. And with its current staff and machinery has capacity to produce up to 6,000 sets. That's important, right? You'll never take special orders if you're already running at capacity. I'm not going to cut you a special deal. It's like I'm already sold out. You know, I, you don't get a volume discount because I, I already have enough volume, right? I don't need your uh, extra order. So, so the fact that we do have extra capacity means well we might be open to, to taking a special order uh, at this level of up output the company estimates its uh, cost producing and selling one set of knives as follows so our costs are $15 and it says the selling price is $20 a unit so we're making five bucks per knife set <laughs> and these are not expensive knives uh, an order has been received for 500 units that's like 10 percent of our, our capacity so that's you know or 10 percent of our production so that's a big order uh but because it's a bulk purchase the buyer has requested a 40 percent price discount let's just do the math on that 20 times 40 percent that's an eight dollar discount so if we're selling for 20 and we're taking eight dollars off they're asking for us to sell it to them for 12 bucks. Well, it costs us 15, uh, but are all these costs relevant? Well, time will tell. Let's read on. Um, if the order were accepted, it would not affect the company's regular sales. That's important, right? We don't want to give somebody a great deal and then they turn around and sell it to our same customers for cheaper. They <laughs> undercut us and be crazy. Uh, we wouldn't want to do that. So it's not going to affect our regular sales. There would be no sales commissions. Okay, so one of these costs is just totally eliminated because obviously it's not going through our salespeople. It's going through a different channel uh, on this deal. And fixed costs would not be affected. Okay, well, if fixed costs are not affected. That means fixed costs aren't relevant to this decision and that makes sense most of these decisions fixed costs are not going to be relevant because if you sell a few more units your fixed costs don't change so they're not different between the alternatives it's not a differential cost and therefore not relevant uh the purchasing company would like their logo uh, engraved into the handle of each knife which would increase labor by 25 cents a unit so labor is going up to uh a buck 75 and they would require a purchase of a new machine for engraving i suppose for two thousand dollars and saying crunch the numbers so let's run these numbers uh let's start with just let's just do the relevant costs okay so relevant costs and let's go down the line materials like almost always going to be relevant i'll do per unit and also total for the order so total for a 500 unit order and our material cost is five dollars a unit and that is relevant and why is it relevant well if i take the order i'm gonna sell 500 more knives and i got to put in my material for each knife so yeah there's there's more materials uh, running through my company for sure uh so that's 2500 dollars of material what about labor well uh labor is relevant uh, if i take the order i got more knives to sell i gotta you know pay employees to, to work on the the line uh yeah labor cost is generally considered relevant in these scenarios and uh it's going up right it's it's taking a little extra time because we're doing some extra engraving work so we're estimating it's a buck 75 a unit i'm just gonna have a little cough mute my mic where is it excuse me uh so yeah our labor cost is 175 a unit times 500 is 875 variable over at variable costs tend to be relevant the more units you make the more the variable costs are the less units you make the less variable costs are so yeah if, if more knives means more variable costs well we're making more knives we're gonna have more variable costs they didn't say anything about variable over it either so a dollar 
that's 500 in total uh fixed overhead not relevant don't don't use it and, and why is that it says there would be no sales commissions on this deal and fixed costs would not be affected so fixed costs are not affected there's no sales commissions and fixed costs would not be affected so all three of those just not relevant uh but there are a couple of other relevant costs uh the purchasing company would like their logo engraved which would increase the labor cost by 25 cents i've already considered that and would require the purchase of a new machine for two thousand dollars so new machine And assuming the machine's not used for any other purpose, we can say, okay, this machine basically is used exclusively for this order, and that's $4 a unit that the machine adds to the order costs. So let's run the numbers here. And our total costs, five plus 1.75 plus one plus four, 11.75, and of course times 500 is 58.75 now what's the incremental revenue the additional revenue here they've said they want the price $12 a unit and that's $6,000 in additional revenue. So overall, the profit on the deal, and I know I'm working a little bit backwards here, but you know, the, the revenue minus the new cost, the, the relevant costs, I should say, and the relevant revenue numbers are given here, uh, 25 cents a unit or $125 in total. So this is a funny situation. So the net dollar advantage of accepting the order is $125 almost certainly if these were the numbers given to me i would say no generally speaking in an accounting exercise you say well, you made a dollar take the deal you lose a dollar don't take the deal basically if it's positive say yes if it's negative say, say no and so it, this question didn't say should we take the deal or not uh in an accounting exercise context i think we take the deal in real life I would never take this deal <laughs> right now. And so this is a weird spot. Uh, so if you were in a position to like ask to explain or rationalize a decision here, I would say, yes, we make money on the deal. If our decision criteria is to make money, uh, we will be better off to take the deal. However, there's risk associated with this. You're buying a new machine. There's a new engraving process. One little mistake will just mean this becomes an unprofitable deal. And, you know, why would I do all this extra work, go all, through all this extra pain in the neck to make a hundred bucks? I don't think so, right? Like, uh, you know, you, you're making hundreds of units of whatever the product is. You're making uh, 25 cents a unit, like 25 cents for a full set of knives. It's ridiculous. So I think we would likely say no to this deal if offered in real life, but that's not the question. It's the question is, what's the net advantage or disadvantage, dollar advantage or disadvantage of accepting the order? The net advantage is $125. We're $125 better off if we say yes to the order. No need to editorialize like I just editorialized. On to B. Separate. Uh, separate. <laughs> separate from A. Good Lord. Sorry about that. Assume the company finds a box from 1994 containing a thousand old steak knives. Although styles have changed, the knives are still of reasonably good quality and sharpness. Assuming manufacturing cost data was similar in 1994 to the chart above, what's the minimum selling price that should be accepted? Okay, so you find this old dusty box of knives, you look and you go, well, actually, they're all in good shape here. Uh, what should you do? Well, pretty much every cost listed here, the material, the labor, the variable overhead, all these fixed costs are certainly not relevant. Everything here is sunk, except for one, selling costs. So you would literally take anything, and, and maybe there's no commissions on this deal, but anything you can make from this is good right because it's just a big sunk cost and you're like oh wow i found some old thing um so anything you could make that would be above and beyond you know it, maybe there's the selling costs like shipping you know you, the person has to pay their shipping and and so anything you could make selling these knives that would cover the sales commissions 
would be good because everything else has already happened, right? The material labor overhead, these are sunk costs in this example. They were sunk in the 90s. Uh, the fixed overhead costs weren't relevant to begin with. So it is just the sales commissions, which is the only future cost. So uh, uh, I would say anything above a dollar fifty should and maybe i'll just put selling costs should be considered that's the minimum though i wouldn't want to lose money on this sale and the only way you lose money is for example somebody buys it from you for uh a dollar and it costs you a dollar fifty in shipping per unit right then why would you do it but otherwise you pretty much take anything and you're you're going to be ahead of the game all right thank you for watching it would be great if you'd hit one of those buttons for me have a great day and i'll see you in the next video bye for now the next video in our series is right up here and if you want a super cut of all of the videos in this series that's the one down below